What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com, back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So I was working on part of the uh, SketchUp Essentials course where I talk about extensions and I was talking about joint push-pull. And uh, I wanted to kind of come in here and make a video about some of the things that you can do with joint push-pull. So today's video brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. And the SketchUp Essentials course is a course that I created for SketchUp to uh, help people get in and get trained up on SketchUp fast. So it's basically the equivalent of a two-day in-person training only you have lifetime access to the courses and I'm still there to answer questions so it's something that I thought would be helpful to really get people up and running on SketchUp so if that's something you're interested in there's two more days left to pre-order the course at 40% off before the price goes up so if that's something you're interested in make sure to check out the sketchupessentials.com slash course now let's go ahead and just jump into it all right, so tip one is that you can use this tool to push pull multiple faces at once. So um, like for example, part of the reason that this extension works when you push pull curved surfaces is you take a surface and then you use joint push pull to push it outward. And you can see what that does is that'll push pull your face outward and I have the borders on right now so you can see what it does. It basically pushes these out and then fills in the blanks. So the reason this can push pull curved surfaces is because it's push pulling multiple faces at once. But like for example, if I was to come in here and uh, just select some random boxes on this grid just by clicking and dragging, it's like this so I could select all of these different boxes and then I could use uh, the joint push pull and I can just push pull these upward. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set my borders to contour so that this is smooth. But if I click and drag this upward and I tap the up key, for example, you can see I can push pull all of these different faces at one time. So you can use this to push pull different faces all at once. So if you were to try to do this on this shape right here, you could come in and you could select multiple different faces and uh, you could push pull all of those at once just by doing a shift click. So you could just activate joint push pull and then you could push pull all of these objects outward. And the nice thing about this is you can see how it doesn't create an overlap in here um, that looks bad. Instead, it actually uh, just kind of joins all of the faces in here. So this can be really powerful if you need to if you need to thicken multiple different faces in your model. Tip two is you can single click and enter a value for offset. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna move it a little bit out of the way. And we'll just use a cylinder as an example. So, you know, obviously you can come in here with joint push pull and uh, you can click and drag this outward. So you can definitely do that, but you can also single click and then type in a value. So I can single click on this face and type in a value of 12 inches to uh, push pull this curved face out 12 inches. So don't just click and drag with this object, you can also be precise with how far you offset things, either by selecting a face and typing in a value, or by activating the tool clicking on your face and then typing in a value and hitting the enter key. So make sure you're utilizing the click, type, enter method, not just clicking and dragging. So the next thing is when you're using round push pull, you can select different faces to round specific corners. So like for example, if you activate round push pull and then you have the all connected option selected, that's gonna push pull the edges along this entire object and round them off. However, if you select the option for surface, instead and you select a pair of surfaces. So like let's say for example that I was to select this surface and this surface by shift clicking. If I activate round push pull and I use surface to push pull that outward, you can see that the only edge that this is rounding is the edge between the two faces that I had selected. So you could use this to round only specific edges if you wanted to. So in this case if I do this this way then it's rounding this edge, this edge, and this edge because those are the edges between the faces that you've selected. So if you're selective with the edges that you push pull, then you can use this to round off whatever you want. And this can be especially good for doing things like, uh, like for example, if you wanted to make a countertop, then you could just come in here and you could just use round push pull to push pull this outward to give it a thickness. So, and probably the other thing you would want to do is you would want to change your finishing in here, which we'll talk about in a second, um, so that you keep your original face. That way, now, 
you can see I was easily able to create basically the thickness of a countertop with a rounded edge. All right, so tip four is you can set the number of segments in the round corners that this creates. So if I was to come in here and I was to select all connected faces and then click and drag, then you can see that this rounds the corners. However, if you come in here and look at the hidden geometry, you can also see the number of edges in the rounded uh, corners that this creates. So you can see how right now this created a corner with four segments, which is what we have set over here. If we were to undo that and set that to two segments, and then click and drag, you can see that this only has two, two segments in our corner instead of four. So you can reduce the geometry by doing that, or you can go up to 16 segments in order to make these really smooth. And you can see how this takes a while because it generates a lot more geometry. So if you need a really smooth corner, then uh, you can up this number of segments. Or if you want to model for something more low polygon, then you can lower the number of segments. So tip five, is click this arrow button for more options for each tool. So like for example, if I was to activate the Joint Push-Pull tool, um, you can see how in Joint Push-Pull Interactive, the newest version, you only see a couple tools in here. But if you click this arrow, you get a lot more options for things like the borders or the edges that are created. Um, the round push-pull has some different options for joint angles and that kind of thing. Vector push-pull has some options that we're gonna look at. So make sure you click this little arrow to see the more options in here because this extension gets exponentially more powerful when you use all of the options in the tool. All right, so tip six is to use the project shape on a plane option to create a flat base to complex objects. So this is an object that I created using sandbox tools just to use as an example. And uh, let's say that I turn this option off and I was to use a vector push-pull to push-pull this down. Basically what that does is that just takes my face and it just push-pulls it down. And that's fine. Um, you can look, this creates this as a solid group, which is a good thing, but you can see how the base isn't flat. Well, what you can do is you can use vector push-pull and click this option for project the shape on a plane. And what that'll do is that'll take basically the footprint of the shape and it'll project it onto a flat plane. So instead of keeping all the irregularities and everything else, this is now completely flat. And one of the benefits of this is now if you click on this, this is still a solid group in your model. So this is a really powerful tool when you're using vector push-pull. All right, so tip seven is turn borders off to generate just a smaller face within a face. So like, let's say I have this surface in here that I created using Curvaloft. And so generally speaking, if you use joint push pull and you use this to uh, bring this inward, like this, you can use this to thicken an object. And there's different things that you can do with that. But you can see how right now, if I was to take that and I was to just uh, joint push this pull this down on the blue axis, this basically thickens this object, which is fine. Um, that's, that's a great ability to have to be able to do that. However, in addition to that, if you were to activate joint push pull and make sure you're showing your more options over here. So if you were to take your borders and change it to none, basically what that'll do is that'll just take your face and that'll push pull this inside That'll basically push pull this face inside your other face. So you can see how I can use this to create a smaller object. So this is good for creating skins. And then you can also use it to create, uh, there's actually ways to create like structures using this as well. So, and then the last tip is if you change the borders to the option for grid, then you can create unhidden geometry. So if I was to use joint push pull to thicken this object, just like this, and we were to set the borders to grid, what that would do is that would thicken our object, but it would create it with the unhidden geometry in here. So you can see how when I create this with the unhidden geometry, then I've got all these lines and edges. And so you can use this in conjunction with something like uh, Selection Toys by TomTom Tom or something like that, so that you could actually remove all of the faces out here by doing a select only, by doing a select only faces and you could actually delete all of those out to create kind of a grid in here. So you can use this to create unhidden edge geometry in your models as well. 
So that's where I'm going to end today's video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Do you have some cool ideas for how to use some of this stuff? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.